Welcome to McGuire's Car Crazy. It doesn't matter if you're a guy or gal, if you love cars, you're a car guy. And this is Car Crazy Central shouting the passion that 30 million of us who are car guys across America and tens of millions more around the world share in common, no matter what kind of cars we love. Join us as we focus on this emotion of being car crazy. Welcome to Car Crazy Central, ground zero for monitoring the major events and personalities of the car hobby around the world. Each week we creatively serve up a full menu of car crazy passion for you to enjoy via our car crazy television and radio shows, as well as on demand through our website, carcrazycentral.com. Our mission is pure and simple, that's right, we want to make you just a little more well, the thing that impresses me so much about Lord Montague is the breadth of what he's done. I think he could probably win this award four or five times over. He's achieved such an incredible amount, uh, both here with this National Motor Museum and virtually right across the whole spectrum of the automotive world. Well, I think if you marry somebody like Edward, the enthusiasm just rubs off and there's nothing else you can do about it. And now your host, Barry Maguire. Without question. The car hobby is the greatest international fraternity on the planet. And introducing you to the car guys around the world is one of the most important things we do because we want you to see for yourself how special car guys are wherever they are and how close we are in our thought processes and emotions. And today, we take you to the very core of the car hobby in England to honor Lord Montague of Bewley as the person of the year for the car hobby in the United Kingdom at the third annual McGuire's Award UK. If there's anybody here that knows Lord Montague and knows his passion for this great museum, it is Michael Ware who is the former director and originally curator for this museum for a lot of years. Yes, I joined Bewley in 1963 as a photographer. Became curator in 1966 and career just changed, you know, came Absolutely marvellous. Almost 20 years together, so yeah. uh, you could really give us some insight in this museum and how it all came together. Yes, uh, yes. I mean, it started off, as you, I'm sure you know, in 1952, when a few old cars were on show in the front hall of Palace House, and then it got bigger and bigger and bigger, and in the uh, 1959, 1960, they were getting nearly half a million visitors in this in the old museum. In the old museum. The old museum. Yes. Wow. So you you uh, oversaw the putting together of the of this new museum I, in 1972. Right. Is that right? Yes, indeed. Yes. Can you give us any kind of an idea what kind of crowds the, the museum enjoys well, the museum, now? The highest it ever got to was I think 640,000 in a year. In a year. Yes. It's absolutely amazing. There's so many significant cars here, Michael. How how is that possible to attract all oh, these they, cars? They come in all sorts of different ways. I mean. Some people are very generous and make donations. Uh, a few, some cars have been purchased. Uh, about a third of the collection here is on loan from from individuals. Um, just under a third is owned by Lord Montague himself. And so it, it, it's a general mix. And then putting them together in, 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 in a fashion where you can really understand the history of the automobile, with all the automobile you and the, the artifacts that you have from, from the early days. It's, it's the artifacts that I really, really enjoy, and I, I think that some museums miss out by not including them. I tell you, the car hobby is in your debt. Uh, you have created um, one of the meccas for car guys here, really capturing the history of the automobile. It's so important that we do that, and I know you feel strongly about that. I feel very strongly about that, indeed. Tom and Sheeta Weedcroft, you're so very special. Yeah. Thank you. You honor us by yeah. being here again Thank tonight. You. And we're so special. thankful I had the opportunity to honor you two years ago. As our first honoree, the first person ever to win this award, yeah. and, and that, rightfully so. That's why it's so special. <laughs> <laughs> Along with Thank that laugh. Uh, in 1955, there was a saying, nothing more useless than the last year's racing car. And I was having a painting done, and it cost him me a thousand pounds. Got talking to a fella, I could buy his car for a thousand. I thought, well, I love the car. <laughs> <laughs> this was that the same, That very same car I sold for two and a quarter million. That very same car, mind you, 25, 26 years. Pretty good later. appreciation, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Have fun, guys. Yeah, it's Thank jolly you. good. Keep your passport out. We're going back to the UK right after this break.
Welcome back to Car Crazy Central and the third annual Maguire's Award UK as Barry talks with some of the celebrities of the evening before the program begins. Mark Wilsmore won our award last year, Person of the Year for the Car Hobby. And you've only had, what, 364 car and motorcycle events at the Ace Cafe since we yeah. were last uh, together for this event. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit crazy, and we're, we're plotting up a, a, a new year as we speak. If, if you hadn't caught us last year, Mark is the owner of the Ace Cafe, resurrected the Ace Cafe, and has an event every night of the year, with the exception of Christmas. If you're ever in London, you have to go to the Ace Cafe, and it's, what an experience it is. It is quite extraordinary and it's great to be invited back to this again as a clear example of that cross continent globalization globalization cross cultural nuts. as well because the the, the culture that uh, Lord Montague hangs out with, as a matter of fact, is not always the same culture you hang out with on a Friday night. That, 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 may, that may well be very true, but what's remarkable is is, is actually perhaps the culture that um, Lord Montague recognized has now flourished and bloomed into, into the culture which, you, which you've seen at the cafe, etc., and, and um, becoming far more widespread as, as, as time goes by. Now, Lord Montague, we're having lunch today, and he mentioned that there might be an upcoming display for the Ace Cafe here at Bewley. Yeah, that, that's right. There's um, being demand from, in essence, from visitors, be they visitors to the website or visitors to the cafe, that they you should do an exhibition, you should do a display. Mark, you do such a great job. He is Mark Wilsmore, the 2005 winner of this uh, of Enthusiast award. of the Year Award for the UK, and rightfully so. Enjoy great your evening. Look, Look forward to it. Okay. Thank you. Caught up with Steve Cropley, the editor-in-chief of Autocar, the oldest magazine in the world for car guys. Sure was. It was started when uh, it was spun off a bicycle magazine, and it was uh, started when there were fewer than 50 cars in the country. What year was that? 1895. Wow. <laughs> so 111 years ago. Share with our television audience some of your thoughts on Lord Montague. Well, the thing that impresses me so much about Lord Montague is is uh, the, the, the breadth of what he's done. I think he could probably win this award four or five times over. For a start, he's been the uh, the, the, the sort of motoring figurehead in Britain. He's been the bloke that's, that's uh, tried hard in Parliament to improve things, not only for car users, but for the car enthusiast. He was also a pioneer publisher in the business I'm in, except that what he did was to publish Old Car Magazine, which is the, the kind of glue that holds the old car movement together. And of course, he uh, he set up this place, which is you, you know started a motor museum when there wasn't one in the country, and then turned it into one of the great car collections of Europe, and then put it at the disposal of the public. <laughs> and now it's the National Museum. And what a wonderful place it is! It is a wonderful place. So I think he's. Uh, I think he's a remarkable guy. Steve, can't thank you enough for coming by and joining us tonight and look Pleasure. forward to your comments later on this evening. Great, okay, thank you. Take good care. When we return, we'll talk with Lord Montague of Bewley, who we're honoring tonight as the person of the year for the car hobby at the third annual Maguire's Award UK. Welcome back to Car Crazy Central and the Maguire's Award UK as we talk with our honored guest of the evening, Lord Montague of Bewley. Well, our honored guest arrived in grand fashion this evening. Lord Montague, wonderful to have you here. Well, it's a very exciting evening for me, and I'm very honored to receive this award. Quite surprising, I thought. You have so many friends here tonight that are so happy for you. I mean, they just, they're, they're exuberant because they, they know you're so deserving of this award. I had one chap say, he deserves the award four times over. Isn't that nice? <laughs> well, I'll do my best for the best of my life. We are so honored to be able to use whatever resource we have to put a spotlight on, on you and help people understand who you are and what you've done for the car hobby. Thank it's a you. special moment for us tonight. It really is. Wonderful to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, it really is my great pleasure to welcome you all to the third UK Maguire's Award. You're all here because the Maguire's Award is now becoming something very significant in this country. And I first became aware of this award when it was uh, being launched here in the UK some three years ago now. I remember it, it struck me at the time that it was, uh, it was high time that we had something here that paid tribute to the people who uh, put so much time and effort into something that we all enjoy so much. Now that was the first year and those of us uh, who were on the judging panel voted to give the award to Mr Tom Wheatcroft, who is also with us tonight, I'm delighted to say. Uh, and at the time, none of us really knew how this would take off. We didn't know if it was going to work in this country but, or, or whether it would take off at all. But it really has, and I'm really delighted that I'm back here now this evening to be once again part of the proceedings. 
So I'd like to bring on stage our host for the evening, the president and CEO of Maguire's Incorporated. Please welcome Barry Maguire. Thank Great you, to be here. Hey, how, I think how, I just want to sit down and listen to you talk today. <laughs> how good is it to be here, though, eh? It really is. And, uh, let me say, uh, Lord and Lady Montague, ladies and gentlemen, wonderful to be with you tonight. Um, Twelve years ago, we got to thinking about how we honor the cars of the hobby. We go to all these shows, and there's all these wonderful trophies and ribbons and plaques that we give to our cars. And nobody had ever honored the heroes the heroes of the hobby, the people that paved the way, the people that made the hobby what it is. And so that was the birthing of the Meguiar's Award. We started uh, 12 years ago in the United States, and now it's on, on various continents. We just had one last month in, in Thailand, um, and that award is just growing like crazy. And listening to the award winner after the event and have him talk about what the Meguiar's Award means to him. And I remember so clearly he said, you know what? We have Ferrari guys here, we have Tudor guys here, we have sports guys here, but the Maguire's Award brings us together as one community. That warmed my heart. We'd like to invite Vic Walsh to the stage, who's been our chairman of the selection committee for these last three years. Everybody had a special memory connected with Lord Montague and Bewley, you know, because he's involved with so many aspects of the hobby. You know, there's this wonderful museum that we're privileged to be here tonight. I can't think of anybody who's, who's, who's sort of enriched our hobby to, to, on so many different levels. You know, as you mentioned, Steve, we could give him six or seven cups tonight for all those different aspects, you know, the auto jumble, the books he's been involved with, Veteran and Vintage magazine, the museum, you know, the great events he holds here. Above all, the, the auto jumble, which, you know, celebrated 40 years this year. Mick, again, thank you so much. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, would you join me in welcoming him, a great friend? Hey, we want to know how car crazy you are. We're going to bring you back to American soil for this one, so close the bonnets and open your hoods. The Corvette guys don't blurt out the answer. In what year did the Chevrolet Corvette first receive a limited slip rear differential? Was it 1955? 1956, 1957, or 1962? We'll have the answer for you a little later in the show. Welcome back to Car Crazy Central as we honor Lord Montague of Bewley as the person of the year for the car hobby at the third annual Meguiar's Award UK. A few weeks ago, I sat down with Lord Montague at the Palace House and just Throw him some questions. Tell us about this and tell us about that. And his response back electrified me. I was just, I sat there, I've known Lord Montague for a lot of years, but I was so taken by how he could take these thoughts and, and talk so succinctly about these little snapshots of his life and the things he's done for the car hobby. So join us now as we look at the videos and enjoy um, a, a brief resume through Lord Montague's own words of his life in the car hobby. I'm often asked how the Montague Motor Museum started. It started when I opened the house to the public for the first time. And uh, I wanted to make a memorial to my father because he was a great pioneer of motoring. And he was the man who took King Edward VII for first drive, first man to drive into Parliament. He was, he was told by the police he couldn't come in, and he insisted. So he was, his whole life was really encompassed by the motor car and selling the idea of the motor car to the public. And so I put five cars in the front hall of the house, which made the whole house smell of oil, may I say, castor oil too, I think. And from the very small beginnings, we've grown to be one of the largest museums in the world. Of course, in the early days, I never expected the museum to be anything but a few cars in the front hall of the house. But as I Time went on, the public loved it. I got bitten by the bug and I began collecting more and more cars. The big cars and motorcycles overflowed into other parts of the cellars and we just didn't have any more room. So we built our first motor museum in 59 and that lasted until 1972 when we wrote, built the existing one. And of course, we are much more than just a museum now. We are a library, a photo library, a film library. In other words, we encompass uh, everything to do with the old car. 
ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome to the stage the winner of the UK Maguire's Award for Car Enthusiast of the Year, Lord Montague of Bewley. I am so privileged as, long, as well as all of us. It, it's a special night. I mean, 50 years. 50 years of unbelievable contribution to this car community of enthusiasts that we have. You've done so much. You, you, have, you were born with the car crazy gene, but we talk about sometimes it lies dormant for a while. For you, quite a while until you began honoring your father. I was bitten by the bug, quite correct. I didn't know very much about the cars at that time. I had my father's magazines called The Car Illustrated, a magnificent magazine. And that's about all. Uh, but then, slowly, it crept up on me. What has been the best part of it all for you? Well, when we opening this building, it was a great triumph, I thought. But I have also enjoyed my long-term rallies, like in Australia and China, like, and been being active. Where all you, have you driven your cars over the years? Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, China, India. And so on. Ladies and gentlemen, so deserving, the 2006 Car Enthusiast of the Year for the UK, Lord Montague. All right, it was a wonderful evening, a wonderful tribute. Lord Montague, we're so proud to give you this night. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, indeed. I'm, I'm a great privilege to receive an award like this, but a very exciting one. Lady Montague, would you say he was a deserving winner tonight? I certainly would. I'm very proud of him, but I, I told him just a few minutes ago he's going to be impossible to live with for at least a week. <laughs> <laughs> he's quite a car guy, isn't he? He is. He's, he's the best. Now, you, you've seen it up close and personal, 32 years married. Yes. Um, how do you describe this wonderful man? Well, he's many faceted, he's, as, you, as you said tonight. Um, but the car side of him is extraordinarily deep and romantic and vivid and wonderful. You gave me permission to, to mention the fact that you are not just Lady Montague, but you're also a car guy, and you're very proud to be a car guy. Well, I think if you marry somebody like Edward, the enthusiasm just rubs off, and there's nothing else you can do about it. Britain clearly, and you're convinced of this, has more, has more than the average car guys here. Yes, definitely. I mean, that's really why my husband set up the museum and knew that it would be a success, because the British adore cars, and they adore looking at cars, and they adore, you know, going to auto jumbles and picking up all the stuff that looks like lumps of rubbish, and they've got a big smile on their faces, and they rush off, and they're happy, and that's what they love. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank God you bless you, and uh, we'll be with you many more times. Thank, Thank you. you. Look forward to that. Keep one foot on the brake and the other on the gas. When we come back, you'll find out what year Chevrolet began putting limited slip rear ends in their Corvettes. Right here on Meguiar's Car Crazy. We want to know how car crazy you are. We're going to bring you back to American soil for this one, so close the bonnets and open your hoods. Corvette guys, don't blurt out the answer. In what year did the Chevrolet Corvette first receive a limited slip rear differential? Was it 1955, 1956, 1957, or 1962? Okay, so what year did Chevrolet start giving the Corvette owners limited slip differential? Well, Chevy generated much stronger interest in their two-seat sports car in 1955 by adding the 265 cubic inch V8 as an option. But it wasn't until C, 1957, that limited slip would help put power to the ground. And if you got traction with this Corvette trivia, you must be car crazy. And now once again, Barry McGuire. I dearly love reading your car crazy confessions, and I do read every single one that comes into our office. And so many of them come from such interesting places with such interesting stories attached to them. And this one in particular caught my eye because it comes from Iraq. One of our heroes in Iraq writes, he's Staff Sergeant Todd Mayberry. His home is actually in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And he writes, Dear Barry, I'm currently finishing up a year tour in Baghdad, Iraq with the U.S. Army. This will be my second combat tour in the Middle East. God bless you, Todd. 
Before I left on this last tour, I was an avid watcher of your Car Crazy program. As days turned to months and then a year away from home, I contemplated on the things that would help my mind and spirit stay healthy. One of those things is thinking about driving my vintage, fully restored 1977 Porsche Target 911S on our popular winding Highway 62 West near my nationally known tourist hometown, Eureka Springs, Arkansas, known for its historic downtown plus car shows and car parades. Barry, there is nothing in the world better to dream about than the echoes of the throaty sound of my 911's muffler bouncing off the Ozark Hills while the wind blows through my hair and experiencing the apex of the curves. I relish the fact that we have certain freedoms that allow us to have time with our vehicles there in the U.S., which are not offered very many other places in the world. It is such a privilege to be able to purchase and own one of the most popular sports cars ever made. Although I cannot touch or feel my car here in Iraq, I can definitely read about Porsches and classic cars in general by purchasing magazines at the local post exchange and surfing the web and what is new in reference to your Car Crazy Central website. As you can tell, Barry, I miss your show, my unique town, and my wonderful car. Now you know I truly am car crazy. Well, thank you, Todd, for speaking really on behalf of all the car guys who are serving our country in Iraq, and there are so many of you over there. I can only imagine what it must be like to be risking your life every day, far from home, and to say the least, very difficult situations, and how often you must long for the luxury of driving your 911 through the Ozarks once again. And I pray that you will enjoy that blessed car guy experience to your heart's content after you come back home to the States. But until that time, may your remembrance of the sounds of your engine echoing through those canyons, the pressure of a G-force power curve, and the, the feel of the wind blowing through your hair serve to remind you the freedoms that you're fighting for are worth fighting for. And please know and tell your buddies that those of us who are enjoying the car hobby to its fullest back here at home are thankful, so thankful that you're there. And we'll forever be in your debt. And for the rest of you, I want you to know that I personally read every Car Crazy confession that we receive. And you know what? Every single one of them is so, so special. If you haven't sent me your story yet, why not do it this week? Send your email to confessions at carcrazycentral.com. Thanks for watching our show this week because this episode and every episode is intended to make you just a little bit more car crazy. Oh,